Nougat Hade, it has been sent just in this hard case. This is a guitar project. I'm a bit curious if it survived the transportation. Let's open this up and uh, check if it is in one piece still. There you go. So the exciting part is of course the neck. It looks good here. Yes. Very good. This is a gold top, eh? Nice. So I've asked to have it just stripped, no hardware, no electronics. And I will replace it with some quality gear. So this guitar is a no brand and the previous owner had no idea where it was made and uh, if it is a brand or a kit or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you are able to see from from the details here if it's if there's any chance of recognizing some things. You can see that there are there's a truss rod at least, and uh, so it's all gold. Even the back is gold. So I was a bit uh, on and off. If I not sure if I like that or not, but. Uh, Holding it in my hand now, it feels okay. It's, uh, it looks good. Okay. So I'll start with sanding it down because I don't like those shiny poly finishes. So I'm hoping to match it down a bit and maybe get the coarse gold uh, finish here look a bit smoother. So you can see here the, the thin lines that I've created with a blade and also with having some water to the sanding process it will go more into the grooves of the lines here so they will be a bit darker. So this is the wiring harness for the red ES335 that I have and I switched that out probably 10 years ago. So here is also the switch and it turns out that it, this is probably too short. So I probably need to find a different switch made for a Les Paul. I installed the wiring harness in this cardboard to make it a bit easier when I solder. And here is the harness removed. And here's the capacitors that I'll use. They are 022. I'm aiming for a 50s wiring. It's not new guitar day, but it's new guitar parts day. So these are the parts that I will need. So even though it's a budget guitar, it's not quite cheap. You need, of course, to take into account all the things you need. So here's a new nut. It's bone, but I should have gone for a not bleached one. The store that I bought them from didn't have one. And the knobs, I had a preference of uh, look for the guitar that I'm going for. So I bought these gold knobs, studs and the hardware here, the tailpiece. Tailpiece and studs, they are in nickel, kind of aged. The springs for humbuckers. The things for the pickguard. I had a pickguard in cream laying here, so I will use that. Yeah, of course we need the poker chip some cream and I needed a new cover for the wiring harness, new frames for the pickups. Okay, so it's done. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. It's uh, 
perfect blues guitar for me. It sounds so raw and uh, brutal when you play it. It's digging into the strings and uh, I can't wait to put it into a tweed amp to see how that combination will be. This is uh, no through my uh, clone of a Dumble or a Fuchs. And of course the speaker is the Eminence Cannabis Rex. I put a little sweet honey overdrive from Mad Professor to the mix and uh, it just, uh, whew, I love the tone. Okay, so this was quite a fun build and uh, it all went very well. I have worked quite a lot on the frets and the nut and the saddles here to make them perfect perfect height and also smooth so they don't add any friction to the strings. I can hear something still on the light E string. It's kind of uh, it's a small overtone. So uh, it's most likely that it's in the saddle here. So I need to file that or make that a bit smoother. Could also be here in the nut, but I suspect this is the culprit. On the build, I managed to order the wrong paired studs and ferrules. I think it's called the ones that go down into the guitar. One was with metric uh, grooves and the other one was with uh, imperial inches. And they didn't of course fit, so I had to wait for the new ones that would fit. So they are the same. They are all metric now really, these in this guitar. And I, I love the sound of these pickups. They are Burst Buckers 1 and 2. And I bought them used from a guy that had them on his Les Paul, an R8, 1958 reissue. Very nice combination to this guitar. And the tuners are Grovers and they are really smooth and lovely. They just work fine. Also something I had uh, in one of my drawers here from another guitar that I pulled them off many years ago. One thing that I probably would need to replace on it is the pots, at least the volume pots. They are quite funky, so if I... Um just picking up the sound now from this mic here, but uh, you probably hear that they are breaking up. Yeah. So they came from the Red ES335 and they are also most likely 300K. So uh, they are a bit dark, but in this amp they sounded okay. I would have liked to have the option to open it up a bit more treble wise, because I, I tried to play this guitar on uh, one of my other amps and it was really dark sounding. On the 5 watt tweet that I have here, I'm, I'm looking at it to see if it's here. But uh, it sounded uh, a bit too dark and uh, the amp didn't have the option to go any further with the treble. So I would probably just replace these for 500k. I think the tone pots, they are probably also 300k and I will try to go with just the volume pots first to see if that's enough. The tone pots seems to be okay, they are not scratchy or anything, but uh, I'm not sure how the combination with 500k on the volume and 300 on the tone pots will be. Maybe you can tell me, but uh, at least I think it could be interesting to try just with the volume pots first to change those. And as you saw from some of the pictures that I, I wanted to uh, batten down the finish on this guitar, I wasn't quite pleased with the way it looked when it arrived. I thought the grain on the gold uh, finish had quite a coarse uh, look. So I think I managed to smoothen that out a bit with sanding it down or matten it down. And I also made some nice things in it if they are nice, but uh, to me they are lovely. Gives it a bit of uh, personality. And I try to make some uh, crackling in the finish also, but it's just fake of course with a knife. Yeah, it's, it's, it's to my liking, so uh, maybe I'll go even harder on the um, Relic a bit later on, I'm not sure. For now it's, it's good. And the back side of the neck is very nice. It's lovely to play. Quite thick, 
The profile on the neck, it's a bit tapered, thinner down here and a bit, I can feel that it goes thicker the further up you go. It's absolutely uh, no problem to play it. Compared to my R8 that I just sold, I think it's almost the same, maybe a tiny bit thinner in the neck profile. And it's uh, as playable as that one, and that was a custom shop. The takeaway from getting, you might have to be lucky, like I've been with this. I got this as a no brand guitar project with uh, no hardware or electronics, as you know. And uh, chances, of course, are that I couldn't make it to be as good as I wanted. But this turned out to be really good. To my experience, if you know how to get your guitar to have a nice action, you work on the frets to make them smooth and uh, level them to be so there's no issues. Uh, get the electronics right and the right electronics. Good set of tuners. I think in most cases you'll end up with a product that you'll be pleased with. And uh, it is uh, kind of a rewarding thing to do. The guitar, when it came, was a quite a low budget guitar. And uh, as I had some of the parts laying around, it was quite easy for me to, to take on this project. That said, it's not cheap to build a guitar like this, at least if you want quality parts. I had some of these parts around there, but they are, of course have values. But to build one for yourself and uh, to have that rewarding feeling when you master it, and when it turns out to be as good as this did, I think it's absolutely worth the time and the, also the money put into it. If you're new at it, it, you will have to go some rounds to probably figure out how to do this. So start with, with an easier one maybe and a cheaper one. Yes, one more thing. The switch here is also from that ES335 that I have here. I, I changed all the electronics in the red uh, ES335 that I have. And this switch I thought would fit right in. And it does, but the switch itself is too short or at least the top of it. When I screw this uh, hood all the way in, it's, it won't stay in the bridge position. So I have to open up the screws here to have it come out far enough that just the metal of the pin will go free of that ring here. It's almost on the last groove here, so it will fall off very easily. So I kind of got to glue it on here and just have it like that. I probably will, or else I will have to see if there, uh, I can buy a new Les Paul switch for, for this. Maybe I'll do that later on. You'll probably see more of me and this guitar. At least I'll come back when I change the pots. This could be interesting to see the combination of 500k and 300k. And uh, if there are some other things I'll do with it, I'll be sure you'll know. <laughs> but it's a perfect blues guitar for me. Or of course, it could play anything else. But it's, if I want to have a blues band, this is the guitar that I will grab first. I love it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye for now.
Thank you.